Hello class and welcome to another video discussion. In this video, we will discuss ways by which society is transformed by science and technology. We will analyze the impact of different philosophers and scientists on science and technology. And we will also analyze the impact of different philosophers and scientists from various regions on science and technology. The scientific revolution was a sudden and dramatic change in how people viewed the world. During the scientific revolution, science and reason were used to explain how the world worked. People no longer turn only to old religious beliefs. There are many key people or events in each generation that contributed to the said revolution. But in our discussion, we will only include Copernican, Darwinian, Freudian, Information Age, Mesoamerican, Asian, Middle East, and African. Here are some of the beliefs of people about the universe before the Copernican model. The Earth is the center of the universe and it is stationary. The planets, the sun, and the stars revolve around the Earth. The circle and the sphere are perfect shapes, so all motions in the sky should follow circular paths, which can be attributed to objects being attached to spherical shells. Objects obey the rules of natural motion, which for the planets and the stars meant they orbited around the Earth at a uniform speed. And this model is referred to as the geocentric model because of the Earth's place at the center. In astronomy, the geocentric theory of the universe is the idea that the Earth is the center of the universe and the other objects go around it. Belief in this system was common in ancient Greece. It was embraced by both Aristotle and Ptolemy, and most Greek philosophers assumed that the sun, moon, stars, and visible planets circle the Earth. So Christianity thought that God placed the earth in the center of the universe, and this made earth a special place to watch human life unfold. And the two common observations were believed to support the idea that the earth is the center of the universe. The first is that the stars, including the sun and the planets, appear to revolve around the earth, uh, and as seen by the sun rising in the east and setting in the west every day. So, ito yung naging basya nila kung bakit uh, yung earth daw ang nasa gitna ng universe. Second, uh, this is a common sense perception that the earth is solid and stable. So, it is not moving but it is at rest. Nakikita nila kasi yung mga gumagalaw sa uh, taas ay yung mga stars and clouds. So, ang iniisip nila, stationary lang yung earth. The geocentric is often uh, referred to as the medieval view of the universe. And it uh, dominated thinking into the early modern age. From the late 16th century onward, it was gradually replaced by the heliocentric model of Copernicus, Galileo, and Kepler. Ptolemy is known to popularize the geocentric model. Kaya ang geocentric model ay tinatawag din na Ptolemaic model. So, Ptolemaic model was not seriously challenged until the 15th century during the Renaissance by Nicholas Copernicus. He rediscovered the heliocentric model from Aristarchus. In astronomy, the heliocentric theory is the idea that the sun is at the center of the solar system, which we know today, right? So, this theory explains many of the observations of astronomers. Some of its revolutionary ideas were that the Earth rotates on its axis axis daily and revolves around the sun once a year. So the word came from the Greek helios meaning sun and kentron meaning center. So historically, heliocentrism was opposed to geocentrism which placed the earth at the center. It was not until 16th century that the Polish mathematician and astronomer Copernicus presented a mathematical model of a heliocentric system, which was later elaborated and expanded by Kepler and later defended by Galileo. So the heliocentric theory became the center of a major dispute between the Roman Catholic Church and scientists. And to understand the theory clearly, here are the seven points for the Copernican system. First, the celestial spheres do not have uh, a common center or one common center. So meaning, the Earth is not the center of everything. 
Okay? So, yung pangalawa naman, Earth is not the center of the universe and only the center of gravity and the lunar orbit. So, meaning, only the moon orbits Earth. Yung pangatlo naman, all the spheres orbit the sun. So, meaning, spheres means the planets. And uh, fourth, compared to the distance to the stars, the Earth to sun distance is almost non-existent. So, the stars are very much farther away from the sun. Fifth, the motion of the stars is due to the Earth rotating on its axis. And sixth naman, the motion of the sun is the result of the Earth's motion, uh, referring to the rotation and its revolution. And lastly, the retrograde and forward motions of planets is caused by the Earth's motion. So it is caused by the fact that Earth's orbit is a different length than the other planets. So, the significance of the scientific revolution of the late Renaissance was significant in establishing a base for any modern sciences and as well as challenging the power of the church. The Renaissance enabled a scientific revolution which lets scholars look at the world in a different light. And religion, uh, superstition, and fear were replaced by reason and knowledge. Now, despite their challenge to church, no, however, many notable figures in the scientific revolution like Copernicus, Kepler, Newton, and even Galileo remained devoted in their faith. So, kahit na uh, iba yung uh, theory na pinaniniwalaan nila about the universe, naging uh, faithful pa rin sila dun sa kanilang religion. Now, brilliant minds started to question all manners of things and it was this questioning that led to the scientific revolution which in turn formed the foundations of all modern sciences. And many of these new ideas contradicted free previous ideas that had been supported by the church. When theology became subordinate to science, meaningful human advancement became a possibility. So the scientific revolution led to the establishment of several modern sciences as well as the understanding that the church was also fallible. So as mentioned in the previous slides, the effect of Copernican theory is widely spread during that time. One of uh, the scientists who believe this theory is Tycho Brahe, who is a Danish nobleman famed for his accurate and comprehensive astronomical and planetary observations. Brahe was well known in his lifetime as an astronomer and alchemist. So Tycho Brahe built large astronomical instruments and took many careful measurements. He is credited with the most accurate astronomical observations of his time. No one before uh, Tycho had attempted to make so many redundant observations and the mathematical tools to take advantage of them had not yet been developed. He did what others before him were unable or unwilling to do. So to, ta to catalog the planets and stars with enough accuracy to determine whether the Ptolemaic or Copernican system was more valid in describing the heavens. So from 1600s until his death in 1601, he was assisted by Johannes Kepler who would later use Tycho's uh, astronomical information to develop his own theories of astronomy. At dahil sa idea ni Tycho Brahe, no, na nakuha ni Johannes Kepler, who is a German mathematician, astronomer, and astrologer, and key figure in the 17th century astronomical revolution. He is best known for his laws of planetary motion, based on several books he wrote. So, Kepler's ideas and books provided one of the foundations for Isaac Newton's naman, no, uh, of universal gravitation. So, during his career, Kepler was an assistant to astronomer Tycho Brahe, as mentioned, and he also did fundamental work in the field of optics, invented an improved version of the refracting telescope, the Keplerian, Keplerian telescope, no? yun yung tawag dun sa telescope na ginawa niya, and helped to legitimize the telescopic discoveries of his contemporary Galileo Galilei. So Kepler lived an era where there was no clear distinction between astronomy and astrology. So there was a strong division between astronomy, which is a branch of mathematics within the liberal arts, and physics, 
which is a branch of natural philosophy. So, Kepler also incorporated religious arguments and reasoning into his work, motivated by the religious conviction that God had created the world according to an intelligible plan that is accessible through the natural light of reason. So, itong idea ni Johannes Kepler, ay ito pa rin yung idea na ginagamit natin ngayon with regards to the motions of the planets around the sun or in the solar system. Next naman, isa sa pinakasikat na scientist na or astronomer na kilala natin no? is uh, Galileo Galilei. Since nabanggit na rin siya kanina, Galileo Galilei was an Italian physicist, mathematician, astronomer, and philosopher who played a major role in the scientific revolution. So his achievements include improvements to the telescope, astronomical observations, and support for the Copernicanism, so the heliocentric theory, yung tinutukoy natin. Galileo has been called the father of modern observational astronomy, the father of modern physics, and the father of science. And the father of modern science. Handa dami, no? So his contributions to astronomy include the telescopic confirmation of the phases of Venus, the discovery of the four largest uh, satellites of Jupiter, named the Galilean moons in his honor, and the observation and analysis of sunspots. So Galileo also worked in applied science and technology, improving compass design, and Galileo's championing of Copernicanism was controversial within his lifetime. So the geocentric view had been dominant since the time of Aristotle, and the controversy of defending heliocentrism as uh, proven fact resulted in the Catholic Church's uh, prohibiting it as a proven fact. And because it was not proven at the time and was contrary to the literal meaning of scripture, Galileo was eventually forced to recant his heliocentrism and spent the last year of his life under house arrest on the orders of Inquisition. So, very, medyo sad yung uh, le- latter life ni, or later life ni uh, Galileo Galilei. Pero uh, dahil hindi pa kasi open-minded yung mga tao nun, dahil nga mas naniniwala sila dun sa nakagisnan nila. Okay, pero ngayon, alam naman natin na mas uh, naging totoo yung heliocentric theory. Okay, itong tao naman na to, tiyak ko, uh, kilalang-kilalang nyo to, no? si Sir Isaac Newton. He was an English physicist, mathematician, alchemist, astronomer, natural philosopher, theologian, and his uh, Philosophy Naturalis Principia Mathematica, published in 1687, is considered to be the most influential book in the history of science. Newton described uh, universal gravitation and the three laws of motion, laying the groundwork for classical mechanics, which dominated the scientific view of the physical universe for the next three centuries and is the basis for modern engineering. So, Newton showed that the motions of objects on Earth and of celestial bodies are governed by the same set of natural laws by demonstrating the consistency between Kepler's laws of planetary motion and his theory of gravitation. Thus, removing the last doubts about heliocentrism and advancing the scientific revolution. So, Newton invented the reflecting telescope and developed a theory of color using a prism and studied the speed of sound. Newton was also highly religious. He wrote more about the Bible than about the science. So, napaka-interesting na isipin na despite of all the previous superstitious uh, beliefs of uh, the Catholic Church no, or the Christian Church, um, hindi pa rin naging ano, hadlang yung mga discoveries niya uh, sa kanyang faith, di ba? 